And as William Barr launches investigations into the origins of the Russia probe, some of those investigators could be turning on each other. Former Attorney General Loretta Lynch taking aim at former FBI Director James Comey, accusing him of mischaracterizing their now infamous conversation on the Clinton email investigation. Here's what Comey told the House Intelligence Committee back in 2017. The Attorney General had directed me not to call it an investigation but instead to call it a matter which confused me and concerned me. According to newly released transcript of her testimony last December, Lynch insists that that did not happen. She asks, quote, so you were, she was asked, quote, so you were basically surprised when you learned that he had said that you instructed him to call this a matter? To which Lynch responds, I was quite surprised that he characterized it in that way. I was quite surprised that that was his characterization of it, because that was not how it was conveyed to him, certainly not how it was intended. Let's bring in former Arkansas governor and Fox News contributor Mike Huckabee. Governor, good morning to you. Surely you have something to say about this. It all is getting very interesting to hear Lynch flatly accuse the former FBI director of mischaracterizing her words. Yeah, she basically called him a liar, and that's something that uh, he's been called a lot over the past few months by people who have looked at what he's said and how it contradicts other things that he said. I think what we're seeing, Sandra, is that uh, this whole issue is now moving from a political theater to a legal theater, and that means the rules are changed. When it was all about the political rhetoric, then uh, people could say whatever they want. James Comey could speak politically. He could go on talk shows. He could go out and promote his book. Uh, he could... Pr present himself as some big deal who knew a lot and was a little more um, more sanctimonious than pretty much anybody else in the country. Now things have changed. William Barr is going to be looking at this not over the politics but whether or not people broke the law, whether or not they stepped over their lines and did something that was not just unethical but was illegal, something that could cost them uh, really their freedom. I think it's uh, it's going to be interesting as these folks are turning on each other out of a matter of self-preservation. Really interesting to read through her words here as our first look at the actual transcript of this closed-door uh, meeting and she said quote I have never instructed a witness as to what to say specifically never have never will. So it really leaves uh, uh, many wondering what exactly is going on here. Governor, I want to move on to what we saw from the president last night. Uh, you just saw him uh, build the Republican Party as the, the party of the American dream. He went on to directly criticize Joe Biden on foreign policy, saying leaders are calling him, him up. Well, obviously they're calling him up. It was a lot easier for them under the Obama administration. The president made that case. He also said the Democrats are the party of socialism, the party of illegal immigration and abortion. What did you think of the president last night? Well, the rallies really were the key factor in his winning the election. He went to places where he could connect directly with the people. And I think the rallies are an important part of his communication strategy now because can you imagine that the New York Times, the Washington Post, or some of the other networks are ever going to let Donald Trump say what he says without their interpretation? No, they're not. So what he does, he goes and does these rallies and he speaks directly to the American people. Uh, when the sound bites get taken, uh, they can't edit that. Uh, not at least in a way that completely diminishes what he's saying and how powerfully he's saying it. It's an incredibly brilliant strategy. He's bypassing the traditional way. Instead of having the New York Times tell America what he said, he's just saying it directly to their faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's such a brilliant approach, and it's working. Well, you look at the strategy to take on Joe Biden, you look at the polling in that state, Governor, and there's a reason for that. In a potential matchup, this is the latest Quinnipiac polling in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, and, and, and it has Biden leading against President Trump 53 to 42 percent, Governor. Yeah, and, and the same polls that we had just before the election said that there was no pathway for Donald Trump to win. There was no way. I had this conversation with many people, including many colleagues on air at Fox just before the election. I said he was going to win. They said, no, there's no pathway. I talked to some of the best pollsters in the country. Only one pollster in America that I'm aware of, John McLaughlin, said Trump was going to win. Everyone else, everyone else said 
Hillary was going to win. Why? Because a lot of people don't want to admit to a pollster that they're supporting Trump because they don't want to be called a xenophobe, a homophobe, uh, whatever the latest phobe is. And so they just uh, don't tell or they, they say they're going to vote for somebody else. But look at the numbers of these rallies. Yeah. I mean, Donald Trump brings them by the tens of thousands every time he goes somewhere. And then you have Beto speaking to enough people that they could all fill a booth at the Waffle House with room for guests. Uh, the same thing, even Biden at his best rally is bringing him in maybe by a couple of hundred. Uh, there's something going on, and I, I think people are going to uh, be asleep at the switch if well, they don't see that this is a movement, not just a, a political uh, going on out there in America. Well, there is definitely something going on, and we are watching all of it. Governor Mike Huckabee, always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra.